Hello and welcome back to March Sadness Day 6. Today's topic is an album with breakdowns for which I have chosen a Day to Remember's album, Homesick. I never quite understood the a day to remember is cheesy comments back when I had this album in heavy rotation. I discovered a day to remember when another song for the weekend came on on my Pandora playlist and I had an instant suspicion that I had just found my new favorite band. I immediately looked up this album and listened to it from the beginning, excited to hear more of this cool new sound. From the instant that I hear them yell, let's go in the downfall of us all, I was not on board. At the time, I liked Blink-182 and Yellow Card and The Story So Far and Neck Deep. I simply wasn't ready for this spooky and scary and satanic music. It was the first time that I ever heard those guttural, shouty, screamy vocals from Jeremy. I'd never heard anything like this before. <laughs> So I skipped a good chunk of the album for a long time. I just really hated the growly parts. So why did I want to talk about a day to remember in this installment of March Sadness? I'm supposed to pick albums that I love, right? Well, yeah, it took a lot of listens and a few years of hearing this album for it to finally click with me. It started with me realizing that the songs that had those scary vocals had awesome choruses in the middle. So I'd suffer through the parts that I didn't like to try and get to the good stuff. Eventually I was thinking, you know, maybe there's something to this screaming stuff. I'm actually kind of getting into it. It's funny because now I consider this to be a pretty tame release and I've grown to love things that are much more intense than this album. But at the time, as hilarious as this sounds, I felt pretty edgy listening to these songs. My very selective A Day to Remember playlist grew from only having the pop punk songs to having all of them and I was listening to this album religiously for a solid two years until Common Courtesy came out, and then I fell in love with that album. As time went on, I found other music that I liked more, and A Day to Remember just kind of fell out of my rotation entirely. So when I have nostalgia for an album like I do with Homesick, but I never feel myself wanting to revisit it, it's a good chance I'm not gonna like it when I go back to it. That's the case for me on almost all of Yellow Card, a lot of All Time Low, and yes, many of the A Day to Remember albums. In a way, I do love Homesick still because it was so formative to my music tastes, but there's really not much to this album. It's about friendship and traveling, which is fine and can be interesting, but Homesick doesn't feel very clever or witty lyrically. What does feel clever is how perfectly they're fusing these two genres together and how huge the choruses are. I mean, this album is packed tight with unforgettable musical moments and vocal deliveries. Unfortunately, the words said in those vocal deliveries don't hit the high bar set by them, but it was perfect for high school me. I have very vivid memories of me shouting along to one of my favorite songs on the album, My Life for Hire. Thinking back to me driving and screaming along to those lines is kind of wholesome for me, but also very corny. I've just got to laugh about it. And I like this song still, corny or not. So I stand by the songs on Homesick as being good, clean fun. And if you ask me if I love this record, I would say yes, I do. More importantly for me, it was the gateway drug that opened me up to more aggressive musical styles. Bands like Turnstile or Counterparts or La Dispute or One Step Closer, bands like that. I would love to know what you think of Homesick or what's your favorite album with breakdowns. Let me know in the comments. Tell me on Instagram in a story or a post and tag me. I'll be giving away a special prize at the end of March Sadness. I hope you join me for tomorrow's video. Here's the schedule, and I'll see you then.